surface building, the axial deformation for column cannot be ignored and special consideration is required for the construction and design. Today we will cover the construction stage analysis for the column shortening. Mm. It will be helpful for the engineers to understand the basic concept of the construction stage analysis and also we can see how Midas Gen consider the construction stage analysis with creep and shrinkage effect. Before we go to the details of the construction stage features, uh, I would like to introduce Midas Gen briefly because some of you are very first time for the Gen. So I will show you the main features, major features of Gen. First of all, it shows the strong point of Midas Gen. First of all, the seismic specific functionality is one of the strong points. We can easily specify the seismic load for the static seismic load as well as response spectrum load. Linear and nonlinear time history load can be defined and base isolator and dampers. And also we can perform the pushover analysis and fiber analysis. Recently we have been implemented capacity design as per the Eurocode 8 and NTC. And comprehensive design codes are another strong point in Gen. The international building codes are implemented for the American standard, European, British, Indian, Canadian, and so on. For the RC structure, steel, SRC, footing, and slab and wall design, as well as capacity design. And the other one is highlight specific functionality that we will see today. Slid column shortening reflecting the changes in modulus of elasticity, creep and shrinkage are available. And we can active and deactivate the geometry support and loading during the construction stage. During this stage, we can fully consider the time-dependent material. That is the difference between another software, FEM softwares. Even though we are considering the high-end analysis, but most important thing in Gen is easy to use. We provide the intuitive user interface such as work tree, task pane, and also modeling is very easy. We provide built-in section property calculator, and also for the BIM, we provide the Tecla structure and Levy structure data transfer. Uh, let's see the introduction of column shortening. Why construction stage analysis is required? Uh, there would be major two reasons. First one is live load, wind, and seismic loads are applied at once to the entire complete structure. However, in case of the dead load, uh, it is the type of the sequence loading as shown in this slide. So, since most buildings are constructed by one story or several floor units at once, so we need to consider the construction sequence in analysis. This graph shows how much different the difference when we consider the construction stage analysis and simple conventional analysis. This is the 40-story building and this column's column shortening, uh, this column's negative moment uh, is displayed here. So line in blue represents the conventional analysis. So the difference is increased as the floor goes up and at the top floor, almost 40% of the negative moment are different. The other reason why construction stage analysis is required is compensation for the differential column shortening in high-rise building. There are four reasons which occur column shortening. Firstly, the elastic stresses due to the gravity load and creep caused by gravity load, drying shrinkage, and temperature variation. This table shows the typical comparative shortenings of 80-story steel and concrete building. 
due to the high stresses, the elastic shortening of the column, steel column is higher than the concrete. But in the concrete building, we can see the creep and shrinkage shortening is quite high. So we cannot ignore those effects during the analysis. Effect of column shortening can be divided into two things. First one is non-structural effect, the other one is structural effect. For the non-structural effect, the total amount of the shortening has been effect on the such non-structural elements as pipes and elevator rail, elevator rail attaches to the concrete. Also, cladding details are affected by overall changes in column length. For the structural effect, the structural effects are caused by different movements only, so not by the total movement. Slab and beams will be distorted and gravity load distribution will occur. As you can see in this picture, the slab movement causes the load transfer to the column that shorten less from the column that shorten more. So load redistribution will occur. In order to prevent that differential shortening, we need to take into account the compensation. For the shortening, there are two different types of the shortening. First one is pre-slab installation shortening. The other one is post-slab installation shortening. Pre-slab installation shortening is the shortening before casting the slabs. And post-slab installation shortening is after casting the slabs. So we can see the line 2 represents the design level. And due to the shortening of pre-slab installation and post-slab installation, the differential shortening would occur. So when we construct this type of building, we need to consider the compensation. So we will uh, install these beams as the number one line. Actually, the compensation, the amount of the compensation is different for the IC structure and steel structure. In case of IC structure, the amount of shortening before slab installation is no importance because the compensation is usually considered when casting slab by labeling the forms. So, therefore, the post-slab shortening due to the subsequent loads and creep shearing kits is the, to be the compensated. However, in case of the steel structure, Steel column is fabricated to exact length and they have, they have the attachment to receive the each floor's slab. So we need to consider both pre-slab installation and post-slab installation shortening. This slide shows the procedure how to apply the column shortening. Firstly, we may perform the pre-analysis for the column shortening. And here we consider the material and section property and load and construction sequence. After that, we will consider the load redistribution, then we will really perform the analysis. And we also have the experiments for the material. Compressive strength, modulus of elasticity, and creep shrinkage. So, by reflecting those material property, we will perform the column shortening analysis. And then, after the construction is started, also we will measure the shortening with the strain gauge. So, based on these results, the strain gauge is shortening results. We will reflect it and update the column shortening the length. So we will really perform the column shortening analysis and then this prediction will be applied to the field. So 
we have seen the general concept of the construction stage and column shortening. I would like to show you the project application which has been done using MIDAS-GEN for the column shortening analysis. First of all, the bus Dubai, the bus Khalifa. It has the 160 floors with the 700 height. The general contractor Samsung Development used MIDAS-GEN to calculate the column shortening and applied it to the real construction. In order to account the time-dependent concrete effect in the bus Khalifa, a comprehensive construction sequence analysis considering creep and ship effect was used to consider the time-dependent behavior. Let's see the model file. So this is the bus Khalifa model file. For each construction stage, first of all, install the mat and then we install the core walls first. After installing the core walls, then continuously we install the frames. So for each construction stage. So for, for this type of the auto climbing system can be also simulated using MIDAS-10. So finally, the model file has been So this is the final model file. Okay. The other project I would like to show you is the SKS Trenu building in Korea. This building uh, has the special shape as you can see in this picture. Uh, it's composite section, the composite structure, and 38, 36 story building. So I will show you the model file. This is the whole model. And for the construction stage, firstly, install the basement core wall. For each story. And then install the walls and frames of the first basement. And then with the top-down method, it has been modeled. After that, the first story will be installed.
so final stage is finally installed as you can see here. So top-down method also can be simulated using MIDAS Gen. And if you look at the columns, the Compose column has been used. So for the Compose column, we can use the Compose section for construction, construction stage. For those type of the Compose section, the steel will be installed first, and then in the next stage, concrete needs to be casted. So my last gen can consider this um, construction sequence for the composite sections also. So if you look at the stage, firstly the frame has been entered, the bare steel has been installed, and then the next stage we can see the composite, the concrete has been casted for the first story section. So it's possible using my last gen. Mm, let's go back to the presentation. The other application is Hanoi Landmark Tower in Vietnam. It has been uh, constructed in, by the Gyeongnam and it has 40 floors, one high building, and 94 floors, two twin towers. Also for those buildings, Midas Gen has been used for the column shortening. So we have seen the general concept and the project application. So I would like to show you the procedure, how we can define those data in Midas Gen. This is the flow chart that we need to do using MIDAS Gen. Firstly, we define the material and section and create the element, which is the same as general modeling. After that, for the construction stage, we need to define the group. So element group, boundary group, and load group should be defined. And then we define the time-dependent material. If we go to the corresponding page, the time-dependent material, we can consider those three, creep effect and shrinkage effect and the time-dependent compressive strength. Those can be assigned by the user-defined function or we can use the database as well. Following code are implemented in Gen, Eurocode and ACI, CBFIP, PCA, Indian, time-dependent materials are available. As I mentioned just before, if we need to enter the experimental results that we checked, then we can use the user-defined time-dependent material as well. Go back to the chart again. And after we define the time-dependent material, then we enter the construction stage analysis data. In this data, we specify the duration of the each stage and also activate or deactivate the each group for the element, boundary, or load. If we see the dialog box. This is the construction stage data dialog box. So for each tab, element, boundary, or load, we can active or deactivate them. Also, we can specify the each duration. And there is another function which is called additional step. Additional step can be used when there is no changes in the element and only loads uh, needs to be activated or deactivated. In that case, without making new different states, we can just simply add the additional step and then activate or deactivate the loads. After we enter all those required data, we can check those activation or deactivation results in the table format as well. So it would be very helpful to check the, those data at once. And I would like to explain another concept in my last gen for the construction stage analysis. There are three different stages that 
my dust gen is considering. Firstly, the base stage. Base stage is a stage for the defining structure and boundary and load groups. So, this base stage is not applied for the analysis, construction stage analysis. So, it's only for the modeling. So, only in the pre-processing we can see the base stage and we can change any data from only in the base stage. And the other one is construction stage. Construction stage means the each construction stage that we activate, activate or deactivate the each data, boundary, loads, and elements. And finally, the post-construction stage. Post-construction stage can be we can check it only after performing analysis. So. This is stage for the performing analysis for transient loads, such as wind or seismic loads. So after performing construction stage analysis, the other load, like wind or seismic load, will be applied based on the member force of the final stage. So those results are based on the post-construction stage. Go back to the chart again. After defining the construction stage data, then we perform an analysis and then we check the results. For the results, we can check the results for each construction stage. So if you go to the corresponding page. We can check the member force or deformation for each different stages. And also we provide min-max stage, which means the among all entire the stages, we program also provides the maximum or minimum values for the member force or deformation. And creep and shrinkage results can be separately checked as well. After checking these results, and then finally, we check the column shortening results. For the column shortening, by specifying the position of the column, then we can check post-slab installation shortening or pre-slab installation shortening or the summation between two. So we will see this, how to check it during the demonstration. Then uh, I would like to explain some other useful features for the construction stage analysis. First of all, MyDustGen provides the building generation wizard for the construction stage. So, using this wizard, by simply specifying the load case and story incremental duration and member age, the program can automatically consider all the stages and then the stage data will be generated. So, this, for this, we will also check it during the demonstration. And the construction stage analysis for the composite member. Uh, as I mentioned just before with the um, model file, the composite section can be defined for each different part. So by specifying it as uh, the activated stage, then we can consider this uh, in the construction stage analysis. Also by specifying this composite section for construction stage data, we can consider the more accurate results for the concrete creep and shrinkage effects. And the auto-climbing form of system. 
The construction stage for auto climbing framework system can be generated as we have checked using first by model. So in the real practical building, it's common that we model the core walls first and then install the other frames. So it can be defined using Midas Gen. Um, material stiffness changes for the crack section. Uh, in order to consider the cracked section in the stages, we can also change the stiffness in this model. We can see the section stiffness scale factor has been entered. For the certain stage, if we want to consider the crack of the section, then by reducing the stiffness, we can consider them. So by assigning those data with the group, then group can be activated or deactivated during the construction sequence. So we can consider during the construction stage analysis. And plate offset function. Uh, let me show you another model file. In this model, the plate element, plate wall, has been installed here. Uh, it's common that plate the wall's thickness is different for the low parts of the building and high parts of the building. If I active only the plate element, you can see the changes of the thickness. So for the low parts and medium parts and the high parts. So in this case, so in the real structure, the outside of the building should be in the same plan. In order to consider that, we can enter the plate offset function. So by, by entering the plate offset, we can also consider the eccentricity due to the self weight of the each load, each the plate element. So for the building, plate offset or beam end offset would be also useful for the, considering the real construction condition. And the other one, the springs. In order to consider the sole interaction, we can enter the various type of the spring, such as point spring support, or surface spring support, pile spring support, so on. For those springs, by assigning them as a group, then we can use them in the construction stage analysis as well. So in the building, if we, mod if we want to model the piles or mat foundation, we can enter those springs and we can consider them during the construction stage analysis. And uh, Lastly, the tender loads. If we look this model file, it has the tendon data at the transfer girder. You can see the tendons in the first story girder here. So for this, in order to enter the tendons, by specifying the required property, like we can select between the pretension, post-tension, or external tendon, and specify the material type, and enter the area of the tendon and some other data. And then we need to specify the position of the tendon. After entering those data, we can simply enter the pre-stress pre load to the beam element. 
And after performing the analysis for the tendons, we can check the tendon primary and secondary forces. I performed the analysis previously, so uh, I will show you the results for the tendon primary and secondary. We can check the results for the dead load or live load, tendon primary, secondary, and creep shrinkage. First of all, the tendon primary. For specify, firstly, specify the stage. Then we can see for each different stage, we can check the tendon primary force. Tendon secondary is the same. For each different stage, we can check the tendon secondary forces in the model view as well as the in the table format as well. So by selecting it and select the desired stage, and then we can check the results here. Those results can be also exported to Microsoft Excel as well by right-clicking and export to Excel. For the tendons, loss data is important. MyDSN also provides the tendon loss graph. Specify the tendon and then by changing the stages, we can check the tendon losses for each tendons. And this data can be saved in the as an image or text format as well. So we can consider the tendons in the beam element. Hmm. Then uh, I just uh, explained the desired steps and uh, useful features for the construction stage analysis. Then I would like to show you how program, how which data we need to enter and how we can do with the MIDAS gen. Before we go to the program, uh, let's see the example model in details. This is the 12 story building in the RC structure. You can see the section size and materials. This shows the construction schedule. For the construction schedule, first day, the formwork of the first floors will be installed. And after two days, which is the third day, we cast the concrete. And five days after, second floors formwork will be installed. Two days after, Again, the second floor slab will be casted, concrete will be casted. So, as you can see, it has the five, five days for the concrete casting, two days for the, five days for the formwork installation, two days for the casting. So, this seven days term is repeated for further dates. Same, two days after casting, five days after the install the next floors forms. Especially in the 22nd day, we remove the form of the first floor. As we just checked, the concrete has been casted in the third day, and the form has been removed in the 22nd day, which means the active age age of the member is 19 day to activate this member. And then other terms are same. So we can see in the table to check the construction schedule. This part in orange represents the how we enter those data in minus n. The this represents the each day 
First day, formwork installation for the first floor, third day, concrete casting, and so on. Then, 22nd day, as we have checked, we have activated the first story slab. So it will be the first stage. And the member age would be the 19th day, we just checked. And the stage duration is the seven day, which means the concrete casting two days and five days for the formwork installation of next floor that we just checked in this cycle. So this will be repeated for each different floor. And mostly the end part of the, this construction, after removing the 11 floors for marks. And then we enter the super imposed dead load. Super imposed dead load is entered for three floors at once. So one to third floor and then four to sixth floor. It has the three different day term. So super imposed dead load is entered, which is the 71 day in the program. And then Live load will be also entered, which will be the 112 day in the program. So let's enter those data in my dash gen. For this, I will start from this model file. Uh, first of all, uh, we can simply enter the time-dependent material data. As I mentioned, my dustin provides the various database for the time-dependent material. Go to the property, time-dependent material, and firstly, let's enter the creep and shrinkage. As we have seen during the presentation, CVFIP, ACI, PCA, and Indian, European, and user defined are uh, provided. I will use the CBFIP for the gutters. Enter the strength of the concrete and notational size. The notational size will be different for each different member. So we will select the auto calculation by the program. So at the moment, I will enter number one and uh, enter the age of the concrete. By clicking the show results button, we can check the click coefficient graphs. Apply, and also for columns. Enter the strength, other data same. Apply, and also for words. the same strengths, okay. So we has been entered for the clip and shrinkage data. For the modulus of elasticity, also go to the property and compressive strengths. Click add. And then also similarly specify the code CBFIP and enter the strengths. By clicking read through the graph, we can check the with the time domain the changes of the compressive strength. Okay. Also for the columns, column and words. Okay. And then we need to make the link between the time dependent material and the previous material. We, so we have been entered. For this, go to the model property again and time dependent material link. By selecting for clip shrinkage and compressive strength and make select the material to make the link. By clicking it, it has been entered. Similarly for column and for war. Okay, 
Just before when we entered the crib and shrinkage and compressible strength data, it was in blue color. But by making the link between the previous material, we can see the color has been changed in black, which means it has been assigned to a certain element. After entering this time-dependent material data, for the notational size of the member, as I mentioned earlier, we will use the program auto calculation. For this, go to the change element dependent material property. As per the CBFIP that we used, for all the elements, we will use the auto calculation for the notational size. So it would be very complex if we do not use the auto calculation. So Using MIDAS gen, we can simply consider those notational sites for each different member. After that, now we will enter the construction stage data using the wizard. Go to the load, construction stage analysis data, and construction stage wizard. From this dialog box, go to the automatic generation. Firstly, for the dead load, which is the self-weight. Uh, as we have checked in the presentation, story incremental will be one. Once, one by one story will be increased. And the duration of each story is seven days. As we have checked, two days for the casting concrete and five days for the installation of the further floor. And member age is that we, until we remove the formwork, it takes the 19 day. And superimposed dead load, also we can consider it. As we've seen, it will be increased three floors as one unit. So story incremental will be three. And starting day will be 71. And day incremental will be three day. As we've checked, it has three day term to enter the next one's self weight, the superimposed dead load. And also we can consider the live load. Live load is applied to all the stories at once. So story increment will be 12. And start day will be this one that we have checked in the presentation. And the day incremental. Since this data, this live load will be entered at once, so there will be no further data. So any number would be fine except zero. So I just entered the one. Then we can see the data has been entered in this table. By clicking OK, the works tree, we can check the data. And with the model view, we can check these changes as well. Where the, from the first story, first stage with the story incremental. This can be checked. If we click in this button, define concrete stage, or go to load, construction stage, analysis data, and define construction stage, we can see each different stage, which load, which element, and boundary condition and load has been activated or deactivated with the, each different duration. Uh, in this data, uh, we will enter the another stage to consider the creep and shrinkage effect, which is the two years after. Enter the day. And there will be no new activation for the element, boundary condition, or load. So just clicking OK. Then it's done. Uh, I will uh, also show you the some other analysis option for the construction stage analysis. In order to reduce the analysis time, if we need to perform analysis only up to the specific uh, stage, by selecting it, we can reduce the analysis time. So 
in this case we can use it. And for the cable element, we can consider the nonlinear analysis in the construction stage analysis. And time dependent effect we will consider. And uh, another thing, if we have entered the live load during the definition of the construction sequence, if we want to check the results for the live load separately, by selecting it and clicking as add, it will be distinguished from the dead load. Because the those load we entered during the construction stage will be those results will be displayed as a dead load. So total amount will be checked. But if we want to make some load case distinguished from that dead load, then we can use this option. Clip shrinkage effect we will consider okay. So we have entered all the required data. Uh, in order to reduce the analysis time, I, I will open the model file that I previously performed the analysis. This model is exactly the same model that we just made. for the each different stages. After performing analysis, firstly, we can check the results, member forces or deformation for each different stage. So, if we want to check the summation, With the changes of the stages, we can check those results. Also, we can check the creep and shrinkage effect separately as well for each different stages for the shrinkage effect. And after checking those data, uh, as I show you during the presentation, there are another useful tool, which is group activation of construction stage. We can check all the activation or deactivation status in the table format at once for the element, boundary, and load. And finally, we can check the column shortening results. Go to the results and column shortening graphs. And then specify which color we want to check the results. For example, if we want to check the column, this column shortening, then check the coordination and in the column shortening graph, click add new column. and then enter the coordinate since this is the concrete structure so as I mentioned earlier we only need to consider the post installation slab shortening so for this we will only check the post installation slab shortening which is written as sub2 in the minus 10. Okay, so data we just entered are displayed here. And let's check the... So we can check the each different shortening for the creep, elastic shortening, shrinkage, and the total summation. This graph can be also saved as an image or text or as well as the Microsoft Excel data. Okay, so that's all for the presentation that we prepared today. 
If you have any question for the, this construction stage analysis, please use your questions window. There is one question regarding the attendance, post-tension attendance. Uh, first of all, we have seen during the demonstration, for the post-tensions, we need to specify the type here as a post-tension, and then enter the required data, such as the tendon material and tendon area, duct diameter, and so on. And then, enter the coordinate of the tendon and in order to activate during the construction stages, each different stages, if we go to the, we need to enter the tendon pre stress load. Here we can specify different group. Then for each different stages, we can specify it as a group. So by changing it, the, we can consider the, each different stages activation. As we, we have seen in the stages dialog box, we can, then we can active or deactivate them in these specific stages. The other question, if it's possible to use the wall element to, to enter in this position, which the load will be distributed to the transfer beam. We can use any type of the element. In order to show you the possibility that both are available, I entered two different elements here, two different element type here. So even though you enter the walls here, so we can consider them as well during the construction stages. For the lateral load, there are another question if we can enter the lateral forces during the construction stages. Yes, we can consider the lateral loads as well. As entering them with the beam loads or nodal loads, we can active or deactivate them during the stages. Only the live load or uh, wind load or seismic load will be entered in the post stages.
Another question regarding the difference between the plate element and wall element. As you can see in this picture, for the wall element here, we do not need to make the meshes in the one floor. So this wall can be used as a shear wall for the mid-rise or high-rise buildings. So it reduces the, your analysis and modeling time. But for the low rise building, we recommend you to use the plate element. Okay, so uh, I would like to finish today's webinar. If you have any further question, please send your question to our emails, e-support and mydasusual.com. Then I can answer you for all your questions. Thank you very much for attending today's webinar.